the time has finally come. We will do the battle between the HMS Ragnarok and the Army of Jimmerism Gimle. So this is the Ragnarok who is which is built originally by Swedish YouTuber Robas, who I don't think play from the depth very much anymore, but his legacy lives on. And this is the HMS Ragnarok, which has been upgraded and fixed by Brenso to a version 2.0, where it's actually a formidable target. The HMS Ragnarok does easily beat the Draconia without even thinking, uh, the Titan Slang, and uh, loads of other formidable vehicles. It is a good battleship. It's decent and works very well. It also looks very cool. So we'll take a little quick look at the ship's looks. Um, we looked a lot about uh, on its features um, in earlier videos and stuff like that. I think we dive into a little bit its guns, but we can do that a little bit quickly. But mainly, we're going to look at the aesthetics of it. In any case, uh, Brenso has made a great job of uh, taking the design to its full glory and making it a really formidable ship. So, HMS Ragnarök, looking splendid. We can just have a little look, a little, whoops, cutaway look. Thank you. So we have some steam engines, we have some regular engines spread out on all sorts of places. We have a lot of these pretty quick fire sieves cannons that works as damage source whenever they're not needed. We can see we have some turrets here, uh, APS turrets that are highly adapted to deal with uh, um, like kinetic shells coming in to kill it. So it's it's a very sturdy design. Right here we can access it. We can see we have a sabot head. So we have a super cavity sabot ones, the same that we use for the sniper cannons. And the cannons, they look like they have the same caliber, but they actually don't. They're a little bit different. And they have different ammo too. So this one is armor piercing High explosive, a uh, reliable thing to deal a lot of damage in the interiors. This is a dangerous one. Now you can have a sneak peek on some of the interiors. And we have more APS turrets here. It basically have four very strong APS turrets and a lot of auxiliary uh, saws uh, that are just uh, very fast fire sieves cannons that also shoot at incoming. Uh, um, they shoot at projectiles, but when there is no a projectile large enough to shoot at, they will shoot at the enemy ship. So they're kind of sabo souls or something like that. They're called, I don't know. We have some engines going on here, and we have an AI core in the bottom. EMP insulated and everything, because not doing that would be absolutely crazy. In any case, let's check the looks of this thing. The only downside is when you spawn here in the share, uh, like you can't get out from here. You'll have to shoot the share. There we go. Anyways, here we have a little bridge, um, looking pretty bridgey, very low roofed. Not at all the luxury we're used to with the uh, Gimle, but it works too. We have a nice little viewing area here. I think it looks pretty nice to stand out here. We have loads of interiors there. And we have Schlacker Captains. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I wonder what the talking was coming from. So, um, inside here, the, the chef is watching all Roba's videos. That's nice, but it also lags. Oh no. I'm auto-repairing. No, don't play, thank you. Stop it. I think it has a couple of repair bots. We're doomed. In any case, uh, down here we can go to the planning room. We got a nice little map of the nether. Interesting. I don't know if that's a real map or not. Here we have the forbidden video screens. And if you're wondering, having screens like this in your build is um, causing a lot of lag. For the official Gimle battles, stuff like this is banned. <laughs> together with video screens that are active. 
Um, yeah, I think video screens may be slightly less worse, but having this, no. Having that, like, it, it basically makes the game render itself several times more. Uh, that just ca causes loads of lag, it's insane. Anyways, here we have the briefing room, as you can see, very nice. I think they play some videos too. And then we can go down here. Uh, and we have, oh my god, maybe we should check the each floor a little bit better first because I think we should we should look at the Mac Valras. This is of course the staple of any robust build. It has um, only trace mounts of dog meat. Well, that's nice. <laughs> I don't have my camera. I accidentally equipped my pistol, so now it, it's like, oh look, it's a large human and a small cat person. In any case, no salad, that's good. Moose burger, blood pancakes, mac waters. Get thick, you skinny bitch. Well, that's super nice. <laughs> we have lots of uh, nice messages here. And nice cooking and uh, back pain problems. I just love this hamburger. Can, can we just get an applaud for this hamburger design? It's pretty amazing. Oh, don't disturb. I think he had something very uh, spicy. So, go down here, we get to loads of different areas. Like the medical department. Where someone is a little bit seasick. You can see that because he's green. We got the barracks, cozy and everything. We got stay out, which is some type of Cthulhu worshipping. I think we should get out of here before we get problems. Cruise launch, very nice. Showers. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. Remember that. And uh, yeah, I think that's that. We got loads of interiors here. I don't know, there is just so... Now we accidentally climbed upwards. That's weird. There is, uh, anyways, a lot of beautiful interiors. We have viewing decks. It's a lot... It's very nice. We have a nice bar with a very tall person. I think that I think the people in this is uh, perhaps a little bit too tall, but anyways, we can walk around the deck. It has nice interiors. It's a very nice design. I like the time spent on making looking this cool. It was a big inspiration for uh, me to make the Gimle look as cool as possible. I really tried, <laughs> even though my interiors may be less realistic. I spent a lot on aesthetics, anyways. In any case, let's dive into the actual battle. Here we are! Look at that, ladies and gentlemen, the Gimli is here, ready for battle. This will be highly exciting, a very anticipated battle. So, who will win? Who will lose? Uh, the difference between the previous battle with uh, Borderwise's Habs Titan Slang is that the Ragnarok is, two is just under 2.2, just like the Gimli. So, uh, we have built uh, the Gimla according to several rules that are very similar to the rules that were for um, Brenzo's uh, official Beat uh, Ragnarok uh, challenge. So, I wanted it to adhere to most of these rules and be able to beat the Ragnarok. Now, um, what really lags for my system is water pumps. So, I completely banned water pumps. Now, the Ragnarok has water pumps, but, uh, well, I don't, so it will be less lag because of that. I'm pretty sure it has water pumps. In any case, um, the Gimla has a lot higher block count. It has a block count of like, what is it? It's under 100k because that's my limit, but it's 86,000 blocks. And block, I don't know, block count isn't such a lag problem for me. Water pumps is, not block count. So I didn't, uh, I, I think uh, Brenzo put up a rule for maximum block count and that we don't have. But in any case, a very anticipated battle. Let's go without further ado. What the hell, why is it shooting off the distance? All right. The saws are really online there. The cram shots really missed the mark there, the first blast. Oh my god, it's very it's very tight. The sniper's popping in there. Now, the Ragnarok has some insane lamps and sieve systems. Man, 
the saws here. Look at it. It's just sawing away the interior exterior shell here. Just dealing some surface damage. Glad we have those shields going on there. Poor turret. They're gonna have a barrel cut off if it's not careful. It's very even so far. Let's come over here to... No? Okay, what's going on here? Ooh, we got we got a cram shell getting through there. Very interesting. More cram shells. That one got annihilated. Another cram shell popping up there. It got through, but it damn missed. Is the Gimla having problems with targeting? Bam! We got our first proper cram hit. It didn't hit anything important. Just a superstructure, I believe. All right. Let's check it out here. We got a cramp shell. Oh! Bam! We got another in the middle hit there. I think the lamb systems is damaged now. Okay, interesting. The Ragnarok's lamb systems are a little bit beat up now. Probably. Oh! We got another big cramp coming through there. Some of the cramps get deleted, but that's probably the cheaper cramps. Man, that's a real miss from my uh, <clears throat> mortars. More cramps popping in there. Bam, that's 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 some damage. The gameless cram shells have a detonation. Uh, God damn it, what we're missing. Uh, the crams have different detonation levels, so some of them will detonate deeply and some of them detonate surface level. Alright, now the Gimla has one big advantage. Uh, that is, if the battle does not go on for so long that the Ragnarok will start to turn um, and switch one side to the enemy, the Gimla has all of its armor on one side, so it can't turn around and be protected um, but its surface of armor all of the armor is put to the enemy from the get-go so the internals are more protected just by this factor and the other big thing that the Gimle does that the Ragnarok does not is that it mostly relies on cram cannons and cram cannons are of course super dangerous to deal a lot of damage now, I really wonder, why haven't I seen the Gimless lasers popping in here? That's really worrying. Hmm. Well, the crams are doing some damage there. The Ragnarok is down to 82 percentages. But its its big guns are still still firing pretty reliably. But look like looks like my lambs are able to shoot it out a bit. The lambs are still online. But what happened? What happened with the laser? Is it too far away or something? It may be too far away. Oh man. What happened to this cannon? I just need to check that. Are we... Are we damaged inside of here? Oh no, don't... Don't tell me... The compute. okay, oh no. Wow, okay, this is interesting. I think that our AI system may be damaged. Oh man, look at this. What's happening? Oh my god! The Ragnarok has successfully sniped one of the AIs. Look, the AI that's controlling the fast firing weapons. Man, that's really bad. The laser and fast firing weapon AI is completely offline. That's the reason. So the other extra AI is back here. That's when he's safe. But one of the AI is dead. That's why the laser isn't firing. Man. That's a super lucky hit for the Ragnarok. Good job, man. I protected that thing with two layers of era. I didn't expect it to be sniped like that. Man, that is scary, man. That is that is truly scary. 
Oh well, will the Gimli be able to beat it still without its any of its fast fire weapons? The snipers, they are on a separate they are on a separate uh, AI, so I don't know what's up with this one. All right. Man, really getting the stutters here. I think that's the water pumps on the Dagnarok doing this. Well, not much we can do. So the lambs are ignoring those small shells. Okay, we're really shooting high orcs here. The Ragnarok is down to 77% just. So I think it's I think it's still gonna lose. But man, that it sniped out. Look at that. They're really trying hard to kill those crans, but they still kinda get through. But man, that the Ragnarok was able to snipe out one of our AIs, that's really bad. That's really bad. Ooh, we got the turret there. We got a turret kill. Bam. I just love Krams. Krams is the Krams is the crip. It's the shit, man. It's, you should you should do Krams. If you're having big battles with big ships, Krams is the way to go. More internal blast for the Ragnarok. Well, I'm pretty sure it's gonna lose by now. Uh, its auxiliary guns are mostly shooting, but man, that the gameless fast fire guns are taking out that that doesn't sit <laughs> well with me. <laughs> Bam! This one then? You see it. This is how the Ragnarok looks underneath. So that's some damage. But yeah, we're just uh, we're just chilling here. Um, this battle has started to become a little bit boring. Uh, the Ragnarok, of course, has ways to deal damage, but this is a best of three. So we need to put them up against each other. Eve, maybe. The Ragnarok will be uh, lucky and shoot out all of the AIs early on. Then the Gimli is very doomed. But right now, 62 percentages. Yeah, it's not gonna win this. More of them are coming. And it just continues. Well, not much is happening for a while there. We're just getting more damage and damage. So I think that by this point, the uh, Ragnarok is pretty sad. And the Gimli is still at 93 percentages. So I think we can move over to the rematch now. None of the main batteries are dealing any damage and these auxiliary things shooting at the incoming cramps will just not be able to deal damage against the Gimle. So, first battle is won by Gimle. Very nice, I'm very happy because this was one of the main points. But let's move on to the next battles and see if we're winning again. There we have it. Rematch, let's go. Oh man, let's see what's popping up there. We got some damage popping in there. They're shooting, oh, they killed both of those cram shells. Man, these sieves on the Ragnarok together with the lambs are absolutely insane. The budget for those system is huge. It's completely insane, but you can see they work. They can actually shoot out a lot of the incoming shells from the Gimla. Let's see here. Two more popping in there. One is shot down, the other one missed. The Ragnarok is actually in the lead slightly. This is worrying. All right, we got new shells coming in. They're getting zapped there. Cramps popping in there. Did we have an internal explosion there? I think we may have. More cram shells. Ooh! Did I see a big explosion? It seems it didn't take out those ones. And there we have. And uh, <laughs> by the way, the stoner cram mortars, they're actually there mostly to distract the enemy uh, sieves and just do big, big detonations uh, or just remove chunks of the deck armor. But mostly to distract the sieves because the time that the sieves cannons spend shooting at the cram mortars, ooh, instead of uh, shooting at uh, the actually dangerous crams, are time well spent. And the stoners, they have 2000 millimeters, and the regular crams have uh, 1970 millimeters. So, 
Um, if they prefer bigger shells, uh, all Civ systems will actually opt for shooting at the stoners uh, instead of shooting at the detonators that are much dangerous, more dangerous crafts. Anyways, uh, it leads that the Ragnarok has finally lost its advantage. What's happening here? Popping in shells there. Boom. And there we go. Now, the Gimlet spends a lot of resources of, uh, on taking out incoming cram shells or big missiles. And uh, the Ragnarok has neither. So the Gimlet actually has a big budget on flak sieves that are not used at all during this battle. So that's a big material disadvantage. But for ships that use more crams, which, are, which I'm actually more scared of, uh, that is completely necessary. Seems that the AI isn't sniped this time at least, so that's, that's good. We should probably be diving in here just to check around. The AI is completely untouched this time. Man. The shells really slow down when they pop in here. But I'm really glad we spent a lot of materials on, on the interior armor instead. Of the exterior armor. Because the exterior armor, we can remove things with bulk. Oh, they're really penetrating, aren't they? I think I think the uh, staggered era at the outer layer was materials well spent. Because you can see a lot of the shots are not getting through this, like, one, two meters of, one meter of wood and one meter of metal. They're not getting through that because we have staggered era right behind of it. Which is a great addition, I think. Okay, now we look a little bit too much at the interiors of the Gimle. One thing I want to see is the, uh, the, the, oh my god, look at this. This cannon has been zapped completely. So we lost one of the sniper cannons, that's for sure. Now the sniper cannons, they're so quick. It's completely insane how quick they are. Um, it's not easily, it's not easy to kind of catch them even firing, it feels like. All right, there we have it. I just pause time. This is a subsurface sabo shell. Come on, it's it's there. We're gonna lock onto it. We're gonna slow down time, and we're gonna see. Oh, <laughs> it shot straight through. Okay, so that thing is basically there to. Uh, Deal some damage to engines and stuff that people hide under the under the hood. And sometimes they don't deal much damage, but there you could see it actually shot off a turret straight off. That's something it does when people put the turret uh, blocks close to the bottom. Uh, the snipers may shoot off the turret completely because those are both to deep damage. Oh my god, deep damage. Look at that. That turret is completely missing. Look at that. That's a miss. <laughs> well, 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 it's looking pretty decent for the Gimle. It has only been two minutes in game. And uh, the Ragnarok is down to 77 percentages. If the Ragnarok is not super lucky and is critting... Oh my god! What happened to the main batteries? They're dead. They're not active. Looks like the Ragnarok is indeed Weaker than the Gimle on these regards. That is very good because one of the main points for making the Gimle at all was to make a ship that could beat the Ragnarök. And it seems that it can beat the Ragnarök 2.0 by Brenzo. So there we go. The Gimle is a superior battleship according to the points I've set up. It can beat the Draconia without any problems. It can beat the Titanslang and it can beat the Ragnarök. That makes it, in my eyes, a superior, the superior battleship in the army of Jimmerism. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to say that we reached the mark, we reached the, the goals. Next time, however, we need to check how the Gimle tackles the Turtle Lord. The Turtle Lord is a crazy cram ship that does beat the Ragnarök. It really does. It's crazy. It's absolutely super dangerous. 
And because the Turtle Lord has some insane cram spam, it has some really barge, barrage cram stacking thing. It's the entire reason. Like that fact is a big reason why we have invested a lot of resources in having a reliable flag sieves diff system on the uh, Gimla. So the Gimla has a lot of uh, flag sieves diff cannons. We can check them out a little bit quickly here as the Ragnarok is despawning. We can just pause it there. Here we have a double barreled one having, uh, what is it, 10 shots in total. Together with this one, all of these turrets are the same. All of these turrets from setup are also the same. Um, we have we, we have one even here. We have so many of them. So the budget to deal with uh, crams, well, that's pretty big. We're not, we're not joking. Big crams are really scary. And having a big barrage of flag sieves diffs uh, really helps us deal the damage. Together with, of course, the fast fire um, anti-missile missiles here. We have a couple of another type there. And th those together with a few auxiliary ones there. Uh, and all the flag sieves diff cannon should be able to take out most cram barrages. Now... I can't be 100% it can beat the Turtle Lord, because if my defenses are not enough to beat it, we'll, we'll, we'll have big problems. But anyways, uh, the Ragnarok is a really good ship, I think, and uh, yeah, it's well built, it's good, it's worse than 300 and whatever, 390 or something. I've only saved this like, uh, what is it? What version is this? It's, uh, maybe it doesn't say hundred times maybe. Well, probably not that many times, but in any case, um, I've uh, built on the Gimel a lot and uh, I really try to make it be able to take out big cram shells, so I'm really anticipating that battle. If you enjoyed this battle, however, you should definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we will be having more Gimel battles and the Gimel Open is of course uh, open submission, so you can submit your craft according to uh, my rules for the battle if you want to participate in the official battles. This battle against the Ragnarok is um, semi-official because I wanted it to beat the Ragnarok almost to the Ragnarok's uh, rules but I have a higher block count because I like wood. Um, so that that's an issue but uh, then we have my rules and the Ragnarok doesn't adhere to those rules because water pumps for example is a thing that just lags too much for me. In any case, that's that. Uh, having a, the game at the lowest settings was made us able to almost run the game at full speed. So really cool that the game that the Gimli got its laser and fast firing cannon AI sniped out early on. That was absolutely crazy. We should probably make some backup system that automatically switches all weapons to another AI if one of them gets disabled. But man, this is this is crazy. Anyways, good game. Beautiful build, Brenzo slash Robas, of course, uh, but the Gimle is superior. I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Rees, and we are officially signing out.